these are the first martyrs. These are martyrs. They're just not Christian in the, in the same quote, but they are what the Christians feel martyrs are. Who will not, you know, blaspheme, will not utter anything, resign their souls, or prepare to die for their, for their cult. So, um, the only difference is that in the, uh, this was written when? In the early 70s, and the Antiquities was written in the early 90s, and uh, in, the, in the Antiquities he changes his tune. He says this about the movement of Judas and Saduk, not about the Essenes. So here we see that the Essenes participated in the war against Rome, according to the, to the Jewish war, or what Josephus was calling Essenes. So they're not so peaceful. And um, they, here he says they, 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 they would not blaspheme the lawmaker or eat any forbidden things. In another version of this that I've told you about, a person called Hippolytus, which is second century Roman church uh, the theological figure. You can get him in the Antinous Nicene Church Fathers. He says, see Josephus goes on here to say there are four grades of Essenes. He himself says there are four groups of, here, like here at the end here, um, Josephus says, uh, there is yet another group of Essenes who do such and such and such marrying Essenes, uh, and so on and so forth. He, uh, he spends about six pages on the Essenes and maybe half a page on the Pharisees and Sadducees. He's not interested in the Pharisees and Sadducees. He's only interested in the Essenes. Because he's obviously spent time. In any case, Hippolytus has it differently. He says there are four groups of Essenes. And it's clearly based on a different version of Josephus. He doesn't, not writing himself, he's, he's cribbing from a different version. And he says, one of these groups are called Zealot Essenes. Another group are called Sicari Essenes. That, that really, I have that in my book now, very carefully presented to people. It was, a, I had it in James' book somewhat, but not as carefully presented. Now, the Sicari we meet in the book of Acts. They are the terrorists called after the, uh, supposedly after the knife they wore to their garments to assassinate their opponents. They're the extreme zealots, but I don't think that's a proper way of seeing them. Judas Iscariot is clearly supposed to be the Sicari. That's where the word Iscariot comes from. I'll tell you that more when we do the gospel. There's no other word that Iscariot can, can even relate to. It's just reverse the I and the S. Sicarios. Iscariot. And, um, I think he's meant to be that. And Judas, don't forget, Judas the Galilean founds the Sicarii. Now the Sicarii didn't call themselves Sicarii. That's a derogatory term used to, uh, to, uh, to designate them by outsiders. You don't go around and go, oh, I'm a knife person. No, no. Sica is Roman for short knife. Like the Arab maybe knife that they wear on their breast. I don't, uh, uh, anyway, what Hippolytus says, just to clarify this, about the Zealot or Sicarii essay, is that if they see anyone discussing the law who is not circumcised, they will offer him the choice to circumcise or death. That's like Islam to some extent in terms of how Islam is propagated. In other words, a person like Paul who thinks he can discuss the law with people, uh, this is not extreme in, in some ways if you understand the period. I know it sounds awful to us, and I don't want to force or not force circumcision on anybody, and, and it's not my the point of my thought. I'm just trying to. But for them at that time, what was circumcision? It's not that it was some sort of wonderful thing. It was the sign of the covenant that they had taken the covenant upon themselves, upon their flesh. Now, you know, it's a primitive, I'm sure, uh, way of uh, displaying your allegiance to something. The e Egyptians had it apparently before them. The Muslims have it. Changing Christians have it, and so on. Okay, Nazis went to look and see about that before they shoved you into the gas chambers and things. So it has a certain weird hold on people. Spinoza says if it were for circumcision alone, he thinks the Jewish people would have survived. Spinoza, the 17th century philosopher. I'm not advocating it. All I'm trying to say is it had a purpose. It was the sign of the covenant. What were these people saying? You can't talk about the covenant unless you come in under the covenant. You haven't got any right to speak about our covenant. 
unless you're, you first have to take the covenant upon yourself. Then you can debate the covenant. Now, from their point of view, there's a rationale to that. What right does anyone have to talk about Mosaic law or not come in on the Mosaic law? If you don't want to, you, you, you don't want to come in, if you don't want to take the covenant upon yourself, how can you, how can you talk about the covenant? How can you speak about the new covenant? How can you speak about heirs to the covenant? So that's what they were saying. That's what the James party was saying. There's a certain sense to that. But rationally speaking, from their point of view, maybe not from a person who's outside of it. No. So, you know, you have a different, different... So I don't think it's that these... So they would offer uh, people, uh, you know, don't talk about the Mosaic Law if you're not willing to come in under the covenant. And uh, the other thing it said that in the recent war with the Romans, this is the Sicari Essenes now, they were willing to undergo any torture, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, exactly the words that we have here, and not to blaspheme the lawgiver, yes, and not to eat things sacrificed to idols. It doesn't say eat forbidden things. It says not to eat things sacrificed to idols. Now, those of you who know your early Christian history, what is the role of things sacrificed to idols in early Christian history? Well, if you know Acts, which we're not going to read in this class, which is why I'm summarizing it for you to do a story with Jesus, we need all this information. And uh, if you know Acts 15, after the Jerusalem conference, when Paul comes up to teach the way he's preaching the gospel, some people who insisted on circumcision were coming down, Acts 15, 1 says, and disturbing his communities in Antioch. So he went to, up to Jerusalem to put the position that he had adopted before the members of the church. And he, that's where James first appears in Acts as a bona fide person with no introduction of who he was and where he came from. And he's the leader of the early church. Now Peter's already fled with death sentence on his head because he escaped from prison and the guards were executed. That was around Acts 11 or something. But somehow Peter's back there giving speeches in Jerusalem, which is questionable whether that could possibly be. But in any case, the way Acts presents it, at the end of the Jerusalem conference, James says, makes his rulings. These are, this is what we want to put on Gentiles. They shall, um, how does he put it? They shall um, stay away from blood, that is the Jewish blood situation, phobias about blood and meat and so on and so forth. So kosher meat is for sure. This, by the way, becomes the, the, the base of Islamic dietary regulations. Muhammad repeats it almost word for word in the Quran around six times. Stay away from blood, things sacrificed to 